Hello folks, uh, today we're going to cover, the screencast is going to cover uh, what's called Super Dev Mode and this is a new feature that was released at Google I.O. as part of the uh, 2.5 Release Candidate 1. A lot of new features with 2.5, uh, in particular this is probably the most interesting, at least in my opinion. Um, what Super Dev Mode basically is a replacement for is uh, the Dev Mode that we previously used to launch your uh, GWT you know, development environment. And uh, it basically is an external uh, code server that's responsible for compiling your Java into the JavaScript, as opposed to relying on the previous dev mode to do that. Uh, may sound a bit confusing or convoluted, but it'll make a bit more sense hopefully once we go through this. Uh, there are instructions for setting it up in the uh, release notes to, under 2.5 if you search on GWT. Uh, but having worked through this uh, myself, uh, there were a few gotchas or you know some things that weren't necessarily as clear as they should have been, at least in my opinion. So I figured I would do the screencast to, to hopefully eliminate some of these uh, issues with you that you may encounter. So I, here I started a blank project in Eclipse, and I'm going to use Eclipse for this. And maybe in a future screencast, I'll demonstrate one using Maven. But uh, right now, to keep it simple, we're going to keep it with, within Eclipse. And we're just going to use that very standard generic project that you can create, the demo project that comes with uh, GWT. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new uh, Google Web application. You know, you can use this to create either a GWT project or a GAE project or both. So in this case, we'll call it uh, GWT25. And we'll just keep things very simple. Uh, we won't use the, the Google App Engine. In this case, we'll just use the Google Web Toolkit. Uh, if you do use the Google App Engine, one thing to be aware of is you have to change the, the, path, the, the, cl uh, the class path and put the Google App Engine beneath the GWT Engine, uh, the libraries, when you uh, under the ordering of your, of your jars. Uh, so something to be aware of. But uh, it does work fine under Google App Engine as well. Uh, so I think we're good to go here. Everything looks uh, good. However, we do want to change it to uh, to 2.5 Release Candidate 1. Now, I had previously downloaded Release Candidate uh, 2.5 Release 1, as you can see here. So I'm going to specify that as my GWT version that I wish to use. Okay, so everything here looks good. I've got it set up for 2.5 Release Candidate 1. Now, one of the first things... Uh, will need to change, and there's not a lot of changes required for this, but one of the things you do have to change is you have to add a, uh, a line to your, uh, your module XML code to add this additional linker that's required for this new code server. More details of this uh, can be found in the, in the release notes, but suffice it to say this, this line of two lines of code here need to be added to read the, the comments. And so we'll save that. Now, the way the code server works is it is actually a server that is responsible for this compilation. So we actually need to run it and configure it to run as a server application. So the way we'll do that is we'll go under uh, Run Configurations, and we'll create a new Java application uh, that we're going to run. And this is responsible, again, for uh, compiling the, uh, the JavaScript. We'll call it SDM. Now, one thing to be... Uh, Here's where some configuration requirements are are done, and uh, the main class in this case you have to specify as this code server. Okay, and in addition to this, we'll need to add that code server jar to the project, uh, and we'll do that in just a moment. I should have done that first, but uh, oh well. And then the arguments that you need to add to this code server class is basically the source and then the uh, GWT module that you're working with. So I've got this already in here, so we'll go ahead and uh, and just uh, copy this. I didn't want to have to risk making any typos there. So this, the dash SRC is a source location for your Java code that will be compiled into JavaScript. And, uh, and you know the client portion of that will be identified through the, uh, the module XML, which is what the next piece of uh, uh, parameter uh, specifies. It says where is the uh, uh, GWT module. Uh, so you specify GWT25 minus the GWT.XML. So it's basically the module name minus the 
gwt.xml. And I notice a code server when running kind of consumes a lot of memory, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and add uh, this memory to it as well. Okay, and actually I could probably add the class path right here. And this is actually new, so this could be risky, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and add the, uh, the code server jar right here. And so if you go under the 2.5 release candidate 1, you'll see that code server jar. We'll go ahead and add that. And uh, I think we should be good to go then. And so let me confirm everything. That looks good. Everything looks fine there. Now we should be able to run this, and this will actually start up the code server if all goes well. Now I think it, it does do an initial compilation as you can see and here it says a code server is running at that location. Now if we open that up in the browser the first time through with uh, in Chrome the first time you'll see is, uh, well you'll see it always, but the thing you'll want to do is drag those two bookmarklets to your bookmark bar so you know I just clicked and dragged them and put them up there. They're already present there as you can see dev mode on, dev mode off. Uh, so they're already there. And uh, and that's really all you have to do at this point on the, on the dev mode. You can see at this point it shows you the stuff that's been compiled by GWT. Again, you can't really do anything specifically in the browser with that directly. We need an HTML file. We need to run the application still so we can serve up HTML files and it can reference these compiled uh, JavaScript uh, files that were done by the code server. So the next step is after you started up the code server, is we will go back and we'll actually run the dev mode as it normally is run with a few caveats. And, uh, and you don't need to run dev mode for this, you just need a web server. And uh, conveniently, you know, I'm going to use that because it's already built in. But you could use, uh, you know, Jetty or Tomcat or anything else to actually serve up your web pages. But uh, since it already comes there, I'll go ahead and run it. In fact, it already should be pre-configured here. Yes, it is. You can see GWT 2.5. So this is what you would normally do when you run the application. But in this case, the caveat I was talking about is that we don't want the code server specified in, this, uh, UR in the URL parameter because we're using this external code server now. So I've copied that. I'm going to go back to, to uh, Chrome, open up a new window, and I'm going to copy that in there, and I'm going to take out everything following the uh, question mark. Not entirely sure why that happens, but uh, in any event, at this point, what I can do is uh, I can actually go ahead and compile this. And so this is actually invoking, if you look in the back end, this is actually invoking the code server in the back end and actually compiling this piece of code. Okay, so we go back in here. This is how it normally would appear when you run uh, GWT under dev mode. Now is perhaps where it gets most interesting. Is now if you go under, uh, since I'm using Chrome here, if you go under your developer tools, the first thing you'll want to do is you'll see this little settings uh, thing on, a, on the bottom right hand corner. Didn't even notice that before, but it's there. And what you want to do is you want to enable what's called source maps under the scripts heading. So under scripts, click on enable source maps. It's not normally uh, done. But once you've done that and, and reload your page, because I already had it enabled, I don't need to do that, but it actually shows you the, uh, the, uh, your Java code now that has been compiled into JavaScript. Obviously, this is you know pretty exciting. So you can click over here and you can actually see your Java code, and what's profound about this now is you can actually uh, put you know watch expressions in, and you can put breakpoints in, and you can do that sort of thing. So if I wanted to watch uh, what the server response label is, so if I normally click over here and click send, I get this little message back. Uh, but if I go back to the uh, if I go back to the dev mode. And say let's put a uh, let's 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 put a watch on that because right now we don't have a watch so there's nothing to watch but let's go ahead and watch that and now when we run this next time through we should get a value there in fact I hit set it once before so that's why it may appear twice 
and you can see it actually has the watch point. I had put that there previously, apparently it held over. But uh, now once we actually click send, uh, I actually had previously put a breakpoint in here. I didn't know it would carry over, but I had previously put a breakpoint in here. As you can see, you can click anywhere and add uh, and, uh, and evaluate in console or add to watch and so forth. So you can actually put breakpoints in in your Java code. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and, and run this because I don't I didn't really intend to stop there because <laughs> it carried over from this previous test I had done. But I'll go ahead and run this, and now we can see the value of the server response label, which is what we put the watch on. So you could go under here and you could look at the element and you could see, for instance, uh, some of the data that's been assigned to it once we run this. Right now, there's, it's, there's nothing been assigned. But now once we go back over to this, because we got the results back from the server, we should see something here. it doesn't show it because maybe it's the second one I told you it's gonna be a little rough so what I'm looking for is here are the, uh, the outer HTML and the inner HTML so you can see that's present there so the, the upshot of all this uh, my apologies for having not, not cleared this out previously uh, but I think you get the sense of how this works as it allows you to actually go in and, and issue breakpoints in your Java code through the Chrome browser. So you can imagine how this is going to just vastly simplify your debugging exercise. I am very excited about this along with some of the, you know, the performance features and enhancements they made with, uh, with 2.5. But uh, that's, that's the main uh, thing I wanted to discuss today, a small screencast. Again, uh, once I get this up and running with Maven, uh, shouldn't be too difficult. I could probably just start the uh, the code server directly within Eclipse and then within Maven just run it as I usually do with uh, MVN GWT run. So uh, I'll have to play with that a bit but it shouldn't be too difficult I don't think and I would imagine the Maven folks who are working who support the uh, the uh, GWT plugin will add uh, native support for this out of the box so there won't be any additional steps that are required. But that, that covers it for today. Look forward to you know hearing your comments. Thank you.